So why am I an activist? Um, it's, it's a tough one, um, and I get asked this question a lot, as probably um, lots of you do as well. Um, it's a tough one because, as Hada was saying, you often feel when the, you know, when the person asking this question, you often, you often feel that he thinks there's something wrong with you, or something wrong with being an activist. Uh, the question is, why Palestine? Are you Palestinian? Do you have family there? And it, you're sort of taken aback, and uh, you're not prepared for this, because it's, it's in you, you know, it's ingrained. It's like having two legs and two arms. I'm an activist. I never thought where I was an activist. Um, I live, you know, was born in France, in a, not a wealthy family, but okay, family, you know. Or my, my dog died when I was four in mysterious conditions, but you know, that's the only injustice I sort of <laughs> had when I was uh, little. So why Palestine? So it's, it's, a really a, it's really a tough one, and when Laif, um, it's at the back, contacted me and asked me to talk about this. I, I thought, no, not this question again. What am I going to do for like 15 minutes trying to answer this question that actually I can't really answer? I'm an activist because that's, that's in my heart. That's how I feel. So I really tried actually, and that's why I've written stuff. There's four pages, but it's, I've written in really big letters, so it's, you know, it's not going to take an hour. Um, <laughs> Why am I an activist? So I really tried to really think about it, and and the answer came just as a very obvious one. I'm an activist because to be an activist is to be alive. Like there's no alternative. You know, you're either alive or you're dead, and I'd rather be alive. So I'm an activist. That that that's the question that came. That the answer that came to my mind like like this. So then. I turned the question around. Why aren't there more activists around? I mean, there are many activists around, and we're seeing more and more, you know, activists coming before. But why aren't there more activists around? Why activism? Why dissident are not, you know, in the front pages of newspapers? Are not celebrated as you know, football players, etc. And I think again, the answer is um, is pretty simple and evident. A recent report, I've, I went to see John Pilger's new last film, uh, the, um, the War You Don't See, which was on, on the cinema, it was on ITV, you can watch it online now. Um, Pilger mentioned a recent report from the US State Department that actually put activists, investi investigative journalists, and organizations such as WikiLeaks on the same level as terrorists. You know, they, we are a danger to power, we are a danger the people in government and and they need so they need as less as possible of us around but so how, how to do this it's not you know they can't I mean we live in some sort of a democracy they can't shoot us all or imprison us all and, and not yet at least um, so why how do they do this and I think to do this they start from a, you know with a very early age and I think they they have to manufacture consent there's a book actually called Manufacturing Consent by Noam Chomsky and Edward Herman that I'll, I'll urge you to read. They have to manufacture consent. First, like the first step is they want, they do not want us to even start thinking that there's something wrong or that we can do something about it. You know, nothing's wrong. You know, the world could be a better place, but look at, yeah, look at Palestine, look at Rwanda. Hey, be happy with what you have. You know, there's nothing wrong with the world. Go on, you know deal with it. So think about school for example, like think about the way from a very early age dissent is not allowed. At school you have to listen to the teacher, the authority, you have to respect the teacher. No one, I mean, you get like better teachers than others that try to sort of push you to be more uh, skeptical. But it's not, you know, it's not only like in the book, like in the education system. You can't be skeptical, you know. If you ask too many questions, you know, get out, you know, go and, you know, you can't do this. Teachers don't like it. And I know from personal experience, they do not like it when you ask too many questions. Um, so they start from a very early age. You know, you're, when you're a kid and what should be your dream life? It should be, you know, work nine to five, buy a car or two, get a house, get a mortgage, have kids, watch the X Factor in the evening and football games at weekends. And, Yalla, you know, be happy with this. That's life. That's that's beautiful. That's life. Go, you know, to Ibiza, you know, once a year with your friends, get drunk. You can't, you know, you can't go better than this. You know, it's that's that's life, and that's why, I mean, 
when you talk to non-activist friend of yours, uh, I guess you have non-activist friend of yours, I have less and less, I'm trying to sort of, you know, push them out little by little. It's hard, you've been friends for 10 years and, well, you don't call me anymore, you know, you talk about your credit card, and, you know. So little by little you push them aside, but still, I still have some non-activist friends. And they don't really, you know, they don't really un understand, they don't get it, because I think it's part of a brainwashing by, you know, the education system, the government, the media, Look at the people, for, for example, the people promoted as heroes or as um, examples who we should look up to. They're not dissidents. They're not like Malcolm X and Gandhi. And who do we have? Like, you know, rich football players. We've got really mediocre pop star. And mediocre is, you know, very slight, you know, mediocre pop stars. And, and, uh, and politicians, you know, you must follow their example. Sell your soul to capitalism. Be as rich as you can and don't even care about what's happening to your neighbor or your, you know. The, the fact, the only fact that it's fine nowadays, nowadays, it's always been fine to earn 500 times or 5,000 times more than your neighbor or than your, the person that cleans the street, is fine in our society. It's actually, it's actually something that you should, you, know, you should be proud about. You know, the fact that Rupert Murdoch, or whatever his name, Bill Gates, is worth, what, how many billion dollars? He is an example. You should look up to him. Wow! I want to be a big guy. I want a billion of things. <laughs> so that's you know that's what people that that's what the government does at school. That's what look at school as well. Our history books. Who are the heroes? Who are the people that have changed history? It's not us. It's not the the people. It's not. It's the statesmen. You know Nelson, Napoleon. Edward the 15th, whoever, you know, they are the heroes, they are the people that have made history, written history books, not us. So that's the first step in, to make, you know, in making sure that we are not going to become activists. The second step is that even if I've been brainwashed for like so long, you still feel there's an injustice and you still feel it's inside you, you want to fight against the injustice wherever it might happen. People, like, again, this sort of machine of propaganda, second step is to make you believe that you are alone. No one else thinks like you. Look, there's no activists around. Look, your neighbors, they don't care about Palestine. They don't care about Kashmir. They don't care about women drive. Why do you want to be an activist? There's no one like you around. You're alone. You're alone and you're, you know, you're an activist. You don't have money and stuff. Why? You just got kind of money. Look at the new iPad, man. What are you doing? You are alone, you know, you, look, it's, it's not that easy to actually find an organization that deals with the subject you're interested in or the issue you're interested in. If you're not an activist, you're going to say, yeah, I know them, you know, PSC or whatever, Jews for Justice for Palestine, Boycott is fairly good, you know. But if you don't know the activists, how do you get to know those organizations? It's, it's very hard. Look also the fact that unions, you know, being part of a union, like, that is supposed to fight for your rights. It's making, it's, you know, it's, made, it's being made more and more difficult. The union leaders are portrayed as evil. Um, you know, during the tube strike, Bob Crow was on the front page of the Sun with like a pit bull and like, oh, you know, Bob Crow is like his hooligan type of guy. You know, it, it's very difficult. Also, I found very interesting. Uh, I'm French and I tend to go to France sometimes. I like the food and. Uh, I've been to, to towns where you speak to an organization fighting for Palestinian rights, and they're not aware that about two kilo, like, like let's say in the next town, five k's away, there's the same organization fighting for Palestinian rights. So you speak for, to seven people, and the day before you spoke to 10 people that don't know about each, each other, they live five k's away, and they could, instead of being five and 10, they could be 15, you know, it's, and you know, the more, you are the more powerful and you know the more you, the, your voice can be heard and that's part of the system as well then number three if you persist you still want to be an activist there's so much injustice you still want to be an activist you know the propaganda hasn't worked the brainwashing hasn't worked you, you are alone bullshit hasn't worked i want to be an activist uh, i'll be an activist the next step is sort of the like uh, from our rulers i don't like to call them rulers from our, i don't know how you call how do you call them you know the press yeah, well, whatever. Those people with like yellow ties. Nick Clegg was wearing a yellow tie today on TV. Yellow ties and, and the rest. Um, 
the third step is the sort of the final step. You're not going to be an activist. You want to try to be an activist? Okay, repression. And we're seeing this more and more. People talk about repression in Iran, repression in China. Look what has happened to you guys, the student demonstrating, etc. Repression. The police is seen more and more as, you know, uh, Alexa Brigade, you know, the, the armed wing of the government. That, you know, the police is not supposed to be the armed wing of the government. You know, policemen is also called a civil servant. They are supposed to serve the civilians. They're not supposed to make sure that the government policies are implemented. That's not the role of the police. That's not, you know, their role is not to bash you on the head with batons because you're saying, you know, like, what are you doing? You are, shame on you or whatever, you know. And that's what, I mean, you, most of you, I'm sure I've seen the um, Jody interview on BBC with Ben Brown. I mean, that's what he was getting at. But I mean, you must have said something to the police. What does it mean? Like, what, if, so if you say to the police, stop beating me up, you know, shame on you, it's okay for them to beat you up and send you to hospital. That, you know, that's crazy. So repression is the next, the, the final step. You're not going to be an activist. Obviously, in countries like Palestine or Kashmir, or etc., repression is on another level. If you are a Palestinian and want to demonstrate, you know, they'll go, we'll shoot you. No, promise, promise, we'll, we'll shoot you. You know, we'll shoot you with, you know, what they call rubber bullets, which is in plastic metal coated bullets. They shoot you with tear gas that they're not allowed to, you know, tear gas you should shoot stuff in the air. You don't shoot tear gas straight at people, but they, you know, they do this. One of the most recent case, I think it's one of the most recent of a Palestinian dying during a demonstration was, it was last year, um, uh, someone I knew, um, and that most of the people who've been to Bilaim knew, uh, Bassem Abu Rame, he was, a, and I mean, it's even on, on YouTube, he was an activist demonstrating, he got shot from very close range by a tear gas in his chest and died. No, I mean, if you're not an activist, no one's heard about this. You know, no one's heard about this. Just imagine if someone, I mean, in the UK, I still think that if a student was shot by the police and died, we'll hear about it. In Palestine, no one hears about it. If you're Palestinian in the occupied territory and you demonstrate, you'll get shot. If you're an, uh, an international, you've got more of a chance not to get shot, even if, you, if we've recently seen this fashion coming back. You know, Emily Yashinovich was shot in the eye and lost her eye. Um, Tristan Anderson nearly died. He's now in rehab in the, the US. So, you know, do not demonstrate. The, the, the good thing about Israel now is that it's very easy to prove that they are less and less of a democratic state. You know, the, the methods they employ are definitely not the ones of a democratic state. If you are a Palestinian citizen of Israel, repress, they, you know, and fight for the Palestinian minority rights in Israel, they'll kidnap you in the middle of the night, send you to jail, and then actually say that they are using secret evidence against you. So you have the case of Amir Mahoul from Itija, which is an umbrella organization that regroups lots of organizations fighting for uh, the Palestinian minority in, in Israel. He's been arrested, must have been a year ago or something, Amir. I actually met him also last summer, uh, no, summer before. He was arrested in the middle of the night, taken to jail. He's been in jail for a year, secret evidence. Your lawyer can't, you know, secret evidence means the lawyer can't even have a look at the evidence. So secret evidence, and they're saying that he's been spying for the enemy. You know, in Israel, spying for the enemy is pretty easy because everyone is Israel's enemy. You know, you for BDS, you're Israel's enemy. So maybe Amir spoke to me. Maybe, maybe, maybe he's actually been arrested because he spoke to me. You know, that's the Israel. Spying for the enemy, I mean, Lebanon is an enemy state. So let's say you have a meeting with Hezbollah representatives. You, you spoke with the enemy. So that's what's happening uh, in Israel. Uh, 